Welcome to Found in Space, a science podcast for kids and teens. Why do stars explode? So Prisha writes, hi, can you tell me why do some stars explode and how? Awesome question here. So we've talked a little bit in the past about stars, but this gives us the opportunity to really look at the life cycle of a star and talk about why do some end in a big explosion and why others don't. So let's start by talking about the difference between high and low mass stars. When we say mass, what we are talking about is how much stuff the star is made from. Big, their size, volume, that's how much space a star takes up and that will change throughout its life. But how much mass it has stays mostly the same. It does change a little bit, but a star either is a low mass star or it's a high mass star. The sun is a low mass star and we compare other stars to our star. So if the star has twice as much mass as us or three times as much mass as our star does, then we will say that that's also a low mass star. Once it gets to about eight times as massive, so it's made of eight times as much stuff, then it becomes what we call high mass. Now, I've used the word life for a star. Stars aren't really alive the way a person is alive or a tree or your pet cat or a snail, but stars do change over time. And there's a time when they form and then there is a time when they are destroyed. So that time period, we're gonna call that their life, even though we know they're not really alive. What makes a star be born is when it starts fusing. What makes it die is when it stops fusing. So let's look at this cycle. Now we need to start with gravity because gravity is the force that is responsible for actually forming stars. So gravity is that force that pulls you back down to earth when you jump. If you can, if you're not somewhere like in a car right now, but if you're just listening and you can jump, try it. You're going to feel yourself come back to earth. So gravity is this force that attracts objects with mass to each other. And there is gravity in space. Now the less mass and the less dense it is, the less stuff packed into a matter of space, the less gravity. But the more and more stuff you pack into a smaller and smaller space, the more and more gravity there is. So we think stars start out as being part of a big cloud of gas and dust called a nebula. Nebula is Latin for cloud. So anytime we have a cloud in space, whatever it's made from, we call it a nebula. Now eventually gravity starts to pull that cloud together and it starts to clump up. And the more clumpy it gets, the stronger and stronger the gravity becomes. And so the more and more it starts to pull that clump together. Now, eventually we're going to get a really big ball of clump of, of this gas and, and dust smooshed in there, mostly hydrogen, a little bit of helium and a sprinkling of all the other stuff, whatever was left over from the previous star that exploded. We'll talk about why again, that's the question today, right? Why did these stars explode? So, as you get more and more stuff in one area, the gravity gets stronger and stronger. Now the inside of the star gets hotter and hotter or the proto star, we call it at this point, the baby star, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. Now, eventually it gets so hot that the atoms, the hydrogen at the core are forced to smash into each other. And when they do that, they stick together. Something called the strong force takes over and holds them together. And this makes a new atom. This is how helium gets created. This process releases a little bit of extra energy. It pushes back and that pressure pushing outward pushes up against the material that's collapsing because of gravity. So the star is collapsing in on itself, but then this pressure pushes back. So it's like it's holding back that gravity. And that is the moment that we say the star is born. It starts shining and producing light, it starts fusing. And when a star is 
fusing. So taking the material and smashing it together. When it's fusing hydrogen, we call it a main sequence star. So main sequence stars are adult stars. Now, low mass stars like the sun, they will live for a really long time. They will live for billions of years because they get hot at their center, but they don't get as hot as the high mass stars. So the cooler the temperature is, the longer it takes for fusion to happen. The higher the temperature is, the faster the fusion takes place. So high mass stars, anything eight solar masses or more, so eight times the mass of the sun or more, they fuse faster and faster, and they have very short lifespans on the main sequence. After the star, whether it's a high or low mass star, has fused all the hydrogen at its core, now there's still hydrogen on the outside, but that's not at the core where it's hot. So when it fuses all the material at the core, then that's turned all into helium. And the star starts to shrink on itself. It starts to compress. It starts to, to contract inward because the fusion has slowed down because there's not enough material to fuse anymore. But when it does that, it starts heating up the core again and it gets really, really hot. And that makes it so that helium starts smashing together and turning into carbon. And that releases extra energy and that pushes back and the star grows and grows and grows. The size of it, the mass stays the same, right? But the size gets bigger and bigger. And so the star grows into what we call a red giant. So the color of the star turns to red and it becomes really, really big. So when this happens to our sun in about 5 billion years, so we don't have to worry about it, but in 5 billion years, it will grow so big, the sun might come all the way out to the orbit of Earth. <laughs> That's pretty big, right? Now, the star will keep fusing material and making heavier and heavier elements. This is where it changes, whether it's a low mass or a high mass star. So low mass stars like the sun, they don't really have enough material that they can squeeze the core tight enough to fuse really heavy elements. So the sun will probably stop fusing elements around carbon. It might make a little oxygen, might make a little neon, but it really will just get to carbon. And then, once it has used that material up, it's going to push the outer layers of the star off into space. It just like drops them out into space. And that becomes what we call a planetary nebula. They're really, really beautiful to look at through a telescope or look at the images of. What's left behind is this dense ball about the size of planet Earth that was the core of the star. And it's just a dense ball of carbon. It's like really, really squished diamond, but it's even denser than diamond and it's shining and giving off lots of heat because it used to be a star. It's not a star anymore. We call it a white dwarf. It's bright, it's shining, but it's a dead star. It's a stellar remnant. And over the many billions of years in the future, eventually it'll cool down enough that it won't be shining anymore. And it'll just be the same temperature space around it. Now that nebula that was released from it, that might eventually become part of a new star. And so that's where we get the cycle from. But what, but here is the really exciting part for our high mass stars. This is where the explosion part comes in. So those high mass stars keep fusing and fusing and fusing until they get to where they're fusing the iron group of elements. So when they start fusing iron, that when you shove iron together, that doesn't actually release extra energy. In order to get it to fuse, it takes up energy from its surrounding. So the star can't hold itself up anymore because there's nothing holding up against the gravity. So the entire star comes falling in on itself, crashing in on itself from every single direction. Now this is this incredibly huge, massive thing, right? It smashes in on itself and it smashes in at the, at the center. And this gets really, really hot and this drives all sorts of nuclear reactions, which causes the star to explode back out and to rebound back outwards. So really it's an implosion and then explosion. And that explosion is what we call a supernova. Specifically, we call it a type two supernova. There are lots of different kinds of supernovae. And that's how the star blows itself to pieces. And those outer layers of the star that get blasted out, that material eventually becomes a nebula that forms new stars. And so that's why we call it the life cycle of a star. 
What's left behind are either neutron stars, which even though they have the name star in them, they're not really stars. They're like white dwarfs, but they're much more dense and the atoms have been broken. So they're just big balls of neutrons and they're really extreme. We'll talk more about those coming up soon. And, or if it was a really, really high mass star, that's how black holes are born. And so we've got a question coming very soon about what happens when black holes smash into each other. So we'll come back to that. But for today, let's go ahead and pause here. That is our cycle of stars. So thank you so much for a wonderful question and we'll see you next time.